will score. 24th minute here at Trinity Health Stadium in Hartford. Judy Ambrosia, Mark Donaldson and our crew. Here's Detroit. Morris in the middle, on the run, he scores! The appeal for offside, no danger. He was played on on the far side by Eduardo Rito. Awful defending by Hartford and punished. Ben Morris, his first goal of the season. And Detroit jumps on top. Difficult, but you've got one guy who's just come in. He's at least three or four yards back. The right fullback, Rito, great going forward, but that's the problem. He plays everyone on side. Joe Rice plays it upfield. Here's Edwards, tries to turn. 1v1, tries to play it for Sadie. Tackles Finish. away, open out, scores! Antoine Opino against his old team, and we are even at one. And now it's Hartford Athletic, Antoine Opino. Johnny on the spot, right place, right time. How big is that save from Joe Rice looking now? Liner towards the box, Logue puts it up in the air. Kept alive, Edwards can't control. Here's a shot and a goal. Edwards couldn't clear it. What's he trying to do there? I mean, just clear it, get rid of it. Hartford are saying, well, Opener was down with a head knock. The play should have been stopped for that there. Play on, you play to the whistle. He's 100%, he starts, he's not 100%. But right now, we're going to see a change made by Detroit City, and it's their recent signing, Senor Suarez, who will come on shortly. Williams tries to send in front of goal. What a play by Reese Williams. And it's 3-1 Detroit. Morris with his second goal of the night. That is a brilliant ball. He knows he's going to get hit. But again... Niall Logue. What's happened there? Ben Morris is free. There's only one player for Niall Logue to get close to. 2016 MLS Super Draft to New York Red Bulls. Seven-year veteran of the championship, most recently with Memphis. And a good cross in. That's a shot. And it's a score. Just that quickly. In the third minute of play, Again, Preston to Bortitaka. He's the forward, and it's not usually the case that forwards score, but to Bortitaka in the right place. I've asked for a better start if you're Las Vegas Lights. The cross coming in, as we've said, 10 of their 12 now, 11 of their 13 goals have come inside the 18, and it's on plays like that, crosses. Lucho scores! 1-1, 24th minute in front of 8th notch. Diaz, as we get a look at the replay, completely fools him, sends him the other way. That's as good of a penalty as you'll see at this level of USL Championship Soccer. And as we sit here now in the 24th minute. Credit the youngsters, he's learned from the best in Yuma. Kostish and in swinging ball, that's not it in! It's Eric McHugh! First goal off a set piece this season, and it's the rookie. For Mr. McHugh, and El Paso takes the lead. 2-1 in the 33rd minute, Eric McHugh. And that was as beautiful a cross from the corner as you will see from Kostishin. San Antonio is going to press, 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 and it's just about breaking that first line and running at that back line. Good look here for Conway. Back for Moon. The cross right to Guido, who pops it in! A quick strike for San Diego. They're on the board first. Find his corner. As we see it here again. 
breaking lines. Conway gets there, does the right thing, plays it back to Moon. Moon with a little no look ball, so good. Guido, quickest feet in the business, puts the ball in the back of the net. Sandy That's it. Right. So we are even at one apiece. And early seconds into this second period handball. A handball called against Stoneman, and it led to the penalty. So the conversion is in. We're back to play. Colonel Joseph Jones with us here. Colonel. Swung in, Vegas has to bat it away. It falls for Bailey who crosses again, and it's headed home. Well, Bailey just onto the pitch. What an impact. It looks like Manley's there on the floor, the goal scorer. But Coke Vegas, ball comes in. He, he pairs it out well enough. But here we are, Bailey again, one directive. Put the ball in the box. Nobody gets Manley as it comes in. Manley there. Keep in mind, Guido had just went off the crossbar ahead of that goal for San Antonio. Here he is, Guido, turning, facing, out wide, Toomey, with a cross, it's in! Perez off the feed from Toomey! And San Diego is right back even! Effect of Guido was when he hit that ball off the crossbar, he finds this in the same exact space, this time lays it off wide to Toomey, and look at this run from Perez across in their post. Gets a little touch on it. Well, Zach Ryan so far this season is one for two on penalties. The one penalty he took that he was stopped on, he scored on the rebound. So Ryan, the team's leading striker with seven goals this season, looking to make it. 80 shoots, and McGuire can't get to it. Uh, he guessed right, and unfortunately for McGuire, who's got a great frame at six foot three, just missed that attempt by a hair. And it's one to nothing, loud and united. But the accuracy and having just enough pace to beat McGuire, because as you said, guessing the right way. Mm. Another one delivering it inside the 18, took his head off the ball, and result a turnover. And a counter here, Williamson. Trying to keep the foot on the gas is Loud and United. Hopkins takes a shot, and he scores. Nightmare scenario here for Miami FC as Hopkins let that thing fly. The DC United Loney in the 45th minute, Loud United has doubled their advantage at 2 0. Deep into their defensive third. And it, and it starts with that initial ball, that outlet ball that triggers everything. It triggers the runs. You see Jackson Hopkins able to find that left flank, draw a defender out, and then you really look to see, see where that secondary and, and other support defenders for Miami FC is. One luxury that we have of the hot microphone down on the pitch. <laughs> Sounds like Sorto, and it will be Christian Sorto. See what he delivers here. Nice shot, and he scores! Hot off the delivery, Christian Sordo, his third goal of the season in the 58th minute. That goal brought to you by Wheels. Miami FC on the board with plenty of life. They trail 2-1. Fine goals in various ways of play and free kicks like this. And obviously Anthony Pulis and Christian Sordo were on the same page with the ability to shape it around a three-man wall. Marked by Markanik on the left to an open Edwards. He's got Openo on his left. Gives it to Antoine along the left touch line against Dotson. Sends it towards the box. Doesn't get to Edwards. Yes! Yes! And a goal! Andre Lewis puts Hartford on the board in the 31st minute. Comes all the sweeter for the Hartford fans. And Opno again, if he's not scoring like he did in midweek, he is creating. It's poor defending. Kyle Edwards plays his part. 
and never mind Johnny on the spot in midweek. Oh, of course not. <laughs> he says, and if I say you're an idiot, can you book me? He goes, yes. Well, I think you're an idiot then. <laughs> Sent towards goal, and it's in. And we're tied at one. Markanik in the 43rd minute. His fourth goal of the season, and we're all even at one. Okay, almost as furious as it is a free kick. Second of all, he's furious that the number 13 and the goal scorer, who's just scored a stunner of a free kick, is still on the pitch because he felt he should have been booked and received a second yellow card. Look at the decoy, the three of them. Hartford just losing a little bit of focus then, but it doesn't matter because this is world class. You cannot stop that. As we should be coming close to the end of stoppage time. Time for one more attack from Opino. Sends it on the right. Open man. Hits the top of the crossbar. And it's headed in by Edwards. <laughs> Funny old game football, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Opino again. It didn't cross the line, first of all, from Rito. It did from Edwards. Edwards awaits the whistle by Alyssa Nichols. Goal! Kyle Edwards in the 57th minute makes it 3-1 athletic. Penalty taker for club and country and rarely makes an error from 12 yards. Against Dotson, the former Hartford Athletic player, and Edwards did not miss. Beautifully placed. Knocked out of there by Edwards. Charleston keeps possession on the far side. Nice move by Rodriguez. Passes to an open man. Here's a shot and a goal. Mark Koenig with his second goal of the match in the 65th minute. And Charleston is right back in it, down 3-2. Charleston are right back in it. That's just a really good finish from a, a really good finisher. Fifth goal of the season. Don't say that. No, you got to tell the truth. It's like a no-hitter, Mark. Come on. Stop it. Here's Rodriguez. Puts it along the ground. Crawford's been open on that play. Back to Rodriguez. Far post. Rice tips it away. And there's the tying goal. Rice could not corral the rebound. Dotson did. And the game all even at three. That's got so much whip on it by Arturo Rodriguez. Now Rodriguez lays it off to Dotson. Charleston up a man since the 48th minute. Now Patterson with room on goal. Oh and he scores! my word. A.J. Patterson from distance. In the 90th minute, and Charleston goes on top 4-3. Uh, eight goals. That's eight goals this year in the 81st minute or later. Drilled it off the post, in on the far side, and it's 4-3. Brignol Vineyards, stoppage time. There are five minutes of stoppage time left, but... Go and, and serve that ball. He had plenty of support inside the box, and, you know, and... I would have loved to see him take that cross a little bit earlier. And you, you have to look at the fact that the Indy defenders are going to be tracking back towards their goal, so it makes it more difficult for them. But instead, he you know, takes an extra touch and, and doesn't get the cross off. But Noik Bo, top of the box. Noik Bo! Demon Noik Bo on to start the second half, has his first professional goal 1 0, Birmingham Legion. Goal brought to you by AT&T. Start with the Birmingham Legion goal, the first for Deben Wegbo. It's a great finish. I mean, if we talked about keys to the game, right? So these next five minutes are going to be paramount, uh, of paramount importance for Legion FC to make sure that they keep their own goal uh, from, from having the nets rippled. And right on cue, Indy 11 equalize. Just like that, Sebastian Guinzani got a touch and a ricochet, and that's all he needed. It's an instant response, and it's 1-1. Oh, it's an own goal. Guanzati hits it off Cochran. 
Oh no. Poker with space. Another pasture out wide. Corcoran. Brett's lovely pass. Martinez! Birmingham back in front, and who else but Enzo Martinez to give the lead to the lead late. I'd say, and I was wrong. The ball came in from uh, Matty Cochran into Nico Brett right there. But again, a great first touch, little dink, boom, 2-1. But now, now Legion FC need to make sure they're switched on mentally. They need to manage the game, as we talked about. They didn't do it when they gave up the... Knocked it forward. He'll pop it forward with his foot this time. The touch keeps it in play. Nice touch. Still alive on the right side. The low pass. Finds Williams. It's in. Points to his teammate. A brilliant ball into the box. Romario Williams has got six on the year. Great buildup from the switchbacks. Beckford in the wide areas. It's a one touch inside the box to find Williams holding his run. Good team goal for they could find themselves inside the box. Watch as Beckford beats his defender and he's able to pick his head up, take a few more touches towards goal, which allows Williams to continue his run and get in the right spot as Beckford plays that ball inside and all. He was indeed back when he committed the foul. Low ball, quickly taken. In behind, low shot. It's ended up in the back of the net. Another threat from that right wing comes to fruition. And Malik Foster has it in the back of the net. Foster goes 1v1, does a good job to bring the ball. And here, quickly taken. Foster out wide. He beats his defender inside the box, continues to go, dribbling it inside. Williams is right there to clean it up. Might have gotten a touch on it to see it inside. I think well it done did. by Foster just to dribble it, get it right there, and take that shot. Watch as Foster, his first touch is right inside. He sets it up. Williams, if he had gotten a touch, would have been offside. Looks like it just sliced in right behind mm -hmm. the goalkeeper. In a four-day span, if you recall, the more recent time, July 9th, it was a 1-1 draw. Kiesewetter on the score sheet that night for the black and yellow. 21st minute and then Vasquez scoring in the 90th minute and here's an opportunity a big save from Tabakis still scrambling and the Toros have taken the lead here in the 28th minute it was Cabrera slotting home scoring for the second match in a row and uh, but yeah you can see how he just kind of pops out good initial save by Tabakis but pops it out in a really good area there right in front of the six yard box and Decent left foot finish, I say, just inside the post. Yeah, would probably had a bit of it as well. So yeah, disappointing for New Mexico United after what has been a, a decent 10, 12 minute spell here. Hurst is gonna leave this one. Or will he? <laughs> and it's Justin Portillo. Pick that out of the back of the net. The Iceman. Strikes in the 38th minute, and we're level here at the lap. Wow. Let's have a look here on this TLC replay. As he struck that so clean, the keeper rooted to his spot. And the Iceman brings New Mexico level. A couple of goals on the season for Akwe. This one comes down to Bruce. Daniel Bruce tips the keeper, and New Mexico takes the lead here in the 43rd minute. And the stadium has erupted here. New Mexico scored twice in four minutes. All competitions this year. His first goal of the league campaign, and it comes on his 100th USL Championship appearance. The only player in club history to do so. Tondale making his 12th appearance here on the season. Looking back post, and RGV have found the equalizer here in the 86th minute. It was Pinzone on his debut for the season, the second half substitute. Oh, hung up to the back post there, and 
the air word just get caught just gets caught underneath it a little bit it's attacking the ball a little too early there and just gets caught underneath it sails over his head pin zone perfect position at the back post there to and just places it places it with his head in the bottom corner Tambakis could do nothing about that 87th minute equalizer for pin zone excellent combination play in the midfield moving things around as you'll see here but FC Tulsa's defense has so far been able to handle it. They've stayed touch tight, but another opportunity here. Scott into the box. Good ball back to Iloski. Iloski makes room, scores. Well, you don't have to give him very much room. He will find the back of the net for the sixth time this season. Now we've got a little bit of shenanigans. Get a quick look here at the replay. Excellent first touch, the awareness to just utterly slow the game down. And uh, Ilovsky might fancy this one. And you see Orange County SC only with a couple of players up. Shot towards goal, and it's a brilliant goal. It's a free kick. Straight into the net, it beats Nelson. And it is the captain, the hard-working captain, Marcus Nakim, the Norwegian. Another look here, a long range free kick from the captain and he gets a hold of it. As he'll do the honors here to try to make this 3-0. Thomas Amang then to put the icing on the cake, comes up right footed and scores his first goal of the season. And I can tell you for the first time this year, Orange County have scored three goals in a game. Even Las Vegas Lights was in itself physical on Wednesday. Great work by Tampa Bay. Down along the side, it's the us and in. It bounces straight to La Cava. And the us not able to hang on. And in the 53rd minute, Tampa Bay finds the breakthrough. Jake La Cava. Who's been working that? Diaz makes the initial first save, but La Cava right place, right time. And just finds the back of the net and now El Paso, the third match in a row Duke will have to battle back from a one goal deficit. This time though, much later in the match as you fall behind in the 53rd. Rose to Calvillo. Trying to get it up to Lucho, will bounce to Kostashin. He'll have a go, Kostashin scores! Dennis Kostashin out of nothing! On the volley, evens it in one. Sends the eighth notch and this crowd into delirium. You're kind of thinking to yourself, you didn't need to do that. There's plenty of time, but he is one of the most talented. Gives Phoenix a good opportunity from a corner kick. Gallardo, ready to whip this one in. It'll be an in swinger, trying to test the goalkeeper to the back post. It's Carlos Harvey. A quick start for Phoenix at home. Harvey gets Phoenix on the board. 1-0. Started with the run of Arteaga that created this set piece. Ball whipped into the back post. Carlos Harvey unmarked, untouched, redirects this one, puts it down exactly the finish that he needed. Goalkeeper tries to get across to make an intervention, but it rises up over top of Oliver Zemla. And Sean Tosh for Louisville City to get this game back level at one. Tosh sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, and Louisville City back on level terms. It's 1-1 just before halftime. Louisville City FC goal scored by number four, Sean Tosh. Mayar gets this one wrong. Tosh with the small run up, waits for Rios Novos, puts it the other way, nestles it right into the corner. Space to exploit. Maris going low and he scores! On the field for barely a minute, and Dylan Maris has given Louisville City the lead. From 1-0 down to 2-1 up. Loose City in front. Creating their own attack, putting pressure on this Phoenix Rising back line. 
Maris with a little bit of a cheeky movement with his shoulders. That creates a little bit of a window to space, tee up his left foot, uses his left and just blasts this into the bottom corner. Pass to diving Rios Novos. Can he keep Louisville in front or will it be Arteaga for Phoenix? Manuel Arteaga, pressure penalty, and he converts! It's a birthday goal for Manuel Arteaga, and Phoenix have pulled this back level, 2-2, game on! Nonetheless, Arteaga steps up with conviction and uses the inside of his foot, gets... Oh, it skips off the ground right in front of him, but good handling, and Monterey Bay Union are up the other end. Fair, trying to play it centrally, here's Valeski! And he scores his six on the year. A bit of a breakdown on the right side, a favorable bounce, and it's the visitors who strike first. Just spoke a few minutes ago about that conversion rate from Monterey Bay. They're 100% right now for this game. First chance of the night. And he has another tonight, number six on the season for him, and he took it really, really well. Ball ricochets around, well left by Chase Boone. The awareness, knowing that Valeski's right behind them and just slots it into the back of the net with the left foot, Valeski, and that is 1-0 out of nowhere. It hits off the face of Moby 